Welcome back, it's part two of recreating Black Panther VFX in Blender. Today we're going to be going over the last stages of our creation, building the environment lighting, the shading, and the real-time compositing so that you can get an epic final pixel output. Activate the real-time compositor, we'll use that in a little bit, and let's make our world settings here. So I'm going to pull out two color ramps in sequence. So just duplicate that, plug it into the other one. And then I just want a gradient texture and then hit Control T to bring up the UV mapping. From there, I'm going to select the mapping node and then Z add 330. And then on the Y axis, I'm going to do 45. This allows you to then bring in this gradient and you'll see the line cross diagonally straight to your model, hopefully. And then I'm just gonna start setting colors with the second color ramp. And this will be your color gradient and how you drive those colors and their brightness. Once you've got some good colors set, then I also want to make note that you should probably set your gradients to from linear to ease or B spline. Just makes them look more smooth and gets a better gradient across the top. I just want to round these values out to solid numbers. It just looks better that way. From there, we're just going to check our scene. Next, we're going to add in our area light. So we're going to shift A, area light, make the size 15 meters, bring it up forward in front of everything, rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees, and then let's set the power to about 1,000. And in the camera view, we can see what it's doing. Based on what I'm seeing, I do want it around 20 meters. Okay, next we're going to be making our point, shift A, lights, point lamp. I'm gonna set that radius to two meters, bring it behind the panther, and I think I want it to be 2.5 actually. Then I'm gonna duplicate it and bring it behind the second panther and set both of those to a power of 100 watts. Now I'm just gonna play with their location and just bring them forward a bit, maybe bring these on the inside, duplicate it, set it as an area lamp, rotate on the X, and I wanna make a second fill light just to bring up those blacks because these panthers are quite a distance from the bigger fill light. From there looking in the camera, I want to make these lights actually 250 watts. And then from there, I am going to quickly duplicate that light and put it behind the black panther so that I have a rim light on him. And then after thinking about it, because of where the camera is going to be, rotate this fill light so that it gives us our best fill from the perspective of the camera. Set that to 250 watts as well. Then I'm going to go into the item and just make sure it's centered so that it looks better. Okay, let's hop into shading the sand grain material. So let's hop into the shader view after I bring Mr. Black Panther up close so we can see him. And I'm gonna pull from the base color a mix color node. There, I'm just gonna make sure it's a mix. Then I'm going to create a color ramp and duplicate it and then create a layer weight node. This layer weight will plug into the top color ramp which will then go into the factor and the second color ramp into the A and the B will be our Fresnel color. I'm going to use this almost as like a secondary rim light that just accentuates the character and shape of the Black Panther's body. The second color ramp, I'm just going to split each section into halves and different shades of gray and black to be the grain colors for the sand. I'm just gonna make sure these are even numbers. And then from here, we can take these, once we've got everything adjusted, and just bring them up out of the way. From here, I'm going to create another color ramp and plug it into the metallic, and then pull from that an invert color node and put that into the roughness. This allows us some variation. And then to that, I'm going to put a Voronoi texture color input into that color ramp, as well as into the color ramp for the grain color. I'm just going to set that scale to about a thousand. And then from here, we're going to just play with this color ramp in the beast blind mode and just make it a little bit more contrasted. Select the Voronoi texture and click Control T. This will create a vector mapping node for the UVs. Okay, and then I can Control Shift click and with Node Wrangler enabled, then I will be able to see the textures of each thing that I shift click on. And you can see I wanna use this as the bump, this top distance node. So I'm gonna bring that into an invert so that it's rounded instead of convex and I'm going to input it into the height of a bump normal. 
Then we're going to add a mix color and set it to soft light and then bring in a musgrave. Make sure you plug the musgrave into the mapping node as well. And this will give us some bump and variation of the surface on it, similar to this reference in the Black Panther scene. From there, we're about done. So this is looking pretty good in the final result. And now it's just tweaking in the bump distance. So I'm going to set the factor to 0.5 and then I'm just gonna look at the normals here. And once we get our clipping correct, you can see that it's creating that sand look. I'm just gonna pan around here and look at this, make sure it's looking correct. It's looking pretty good. There's some tweaking to do still, but I'm liking the results so far. By the way, if you want any good examples on setting up different compositions, I have a link to an example from the future to set up your composition, change it up. So you can see like they've got like typography, setting up hierarchy, creating motion, etc. Now let's set up the compositing nodes. Now, if you remember, we set up the real-time compositor earlier in this series. So I'm just gonna tweak the lighting again to my liking until I have a specific frame that I wanna use as my frame while we're in compositing. I'll set my render settings really quickly, change the render samples to 300, make sure my light paths are up to sick, go to the color management, set the contrast to medium high contrast. Then I'll double check that persistent data is checked and then I'm going to set the file format to PNG just for this situation. That looks pretty good to me. And now we can, nah, I think I want to do this view. Yes, that's looking a lot better. Then you can control shift click on your render layer and you should be able to see your render. From there, I am going to bring in a color mix node and I'm going to add it with a blurred version of the image. So bring in fast Gaussian, set it to 25, image size to 0.75, and set the factor to one. This is going to give you a glow effect. From here, I'm going to the view, bring the zoom back a little bit. I'm going to duplicate the blur. I'm just going to pull a ellipse mask up and then set the X and Y to something like 800, something really big. This will create a vignette. Yeah, maybe a thousand looks good. Set the size, make sure it's one, add a color, brightness and contrast and bring it up just so that it's not darkening your frame too much. From there, just tweak those values to your liking and then we can mix those again with another multiply mix node. I settled on brightness of 30, contrast of one, and a fast Gaussian X and Y of 800. And then I scaled the width and height to 0.5 and 0.3. You can play around with it more. And I just added a hue saturation value so that I can change the colors, just like the frames do in the final renders from Black Panther end credits. And I'm just going to plug them into a multiply node and plug them into the viewer. I'm going to bring that factor up to one, and then I'm going to readjust the brightness to my liking. This is looking a little bit better. Now I'm gonna add a lens distortion, set it to fit, and then change the distort and the dispersion to 0.01. From there, just make sure that you bring that into the composite node as well. And then everything should show up in your viewport the way that you have set up the compositing. This is super helpful because you have a better idea of what you'll be looking at when you're rendering out your final pixel. From here, I might add another brightness and contrast node just to bring the exposure up and down of the image. You can also do this in the render tab, probably a better idea. I just happened to do it this way this time. And from here, just set a file path and then you're ready to render as long as you're in GPU mode. Go to render and render animation. You can see I'm making a couple more adjustments. I'm just tweaking it to my personal taste. I really wanted to get this rim light really accentuating the highlights along the Black Panther's shoulder. And from there, just doing things to your liking just like I am now. And once you've got everything tweaked and set up, you can see that you can change the hue and coloration so that you can really have some fun changing the scenes and you can probably animate that as well. Thanks for watching part two of Black Panther VFX in Blender. I hope you learned a lot and I hope to see some really cool renders that you guys make. Tag me on Instagram, Owen Jenkins Design. I would love to see your work. If you have any questions or comments, ideas for future videos, drop them in the comments, hit the like and subscribe button and be ready for next week's video.
And don't forget, create more than you consume.